This is Coogan Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella or at Macklin's Gym Marbella in Port Bonos here in Spain. We are indeed. With me I've got the WBO middleweight second champion. Right, I mean, you're going to have to rephrase that Coogan style, aren't you? <laughs> What sort of hair yeah. you got on your camera there? You've got some yeah. sort of like pubic hair. Look, up there. Well, no, it's just the hair, isn't it? Oh. Well, um, yeah, but you're not number one middleweight, are you? I am. Yeah? I am, and I will, I will prove it. At the moment, though, you're number two, aren't you? WBO middleweight champion of the world. You ain't got three belts, though, have you? No, I've got one, but none of the other middleweights, Barmy and Glofkin, have got any. True, so you put Golovkin in, then Saunders, wouldn't you? No, two champions, you, we're both unbeaten. We, we're side to side. Yeah. Until we either whips my ass or whip his ass. One of the two. So currently, you're still awaiting an opponent. What's been the delay? Do you know what, Kogan? I genuinely don't know. I think that's down to Frank Warren. People ask me who am I fighting. I've been told one, then I think Golden Boy's arguing another. And, you know, but. The way things is looking, I don't know if I'll be on the December bill or not. You know, so if I'm not, uh, sorry, the September bill. But if I'm not, then uh, I'm definitely will be 100% will be fine in September if I'm not on that bill. A million percent, got to. Because that was the plan for you to fight on the undercard of Canelo and Smith. So, what what would you say the chances of that happening actually are right now as we stand? Uh, very very slim. Very slim. For what reason? The opponent wise Look, or do you know what listen? Coogan, five weeks out five weeks out before a world title fight and still not in a full mind. I don't know whose fault it is to be fair, but I know it's not mine. Still no um, opponent. There was talk or rumours about Gabriel Rosado. Yeah listen whoever it is, anybody, I just wanna fight. You know, and, and be tracked fairly. Um, I've got no problem. You know, we, we set a plan out. Frank did to me, so I, I would have been happy with that plan to carry on. But you know, uh, Canelo was thrown in the mix, and uh, there was talks about scene on Golden Boy or whatnot else. Look, I just got to wait. I just got to wait for my phone call back from Frank, um, and see where I go from there. So no, it's not looking very strong at the minute. But regardless of that, you're in camp now, you've been in camp for what, 10 days you've been out here or so? three weeks, yeah, coming here, three weeks. Three weeks you've been out here? Coming up three weeks now, this is the third week. Oh. Thought it was shorter than that. Um, but you're obviously just still putting in the work regardless of whatever, now you just... Listen, because I'm getting ready for a fight, I will be fighting, I will definitely be fighting in September. I will definitely be fighting in September. Wherever, wherever, wherever it is, regardless where it is, I will have to fight in September because apparently there's a big fight coming up in December and, um, you know, I need to shake the ring rust off. I say ring rust, I'm, I'm, I don't really get a lot of ring rust, but it's still nice just to get the feel of getting your hands wrapped and under lights and whatnot else for a big fight, which I'm hearing is Canelo. Whether it is or not, again, Manks in uh, in Ryan, so it's only hearsay. Well, I'm sure Liam Smith will have something to say about that. Well, listen, this is why I say it's hearsay because he's fine that, that people's looking over Liam Smith like people's looking over Liam Smith like he's a nobody. And to be fair, that really works in his favour, really, because if Canelo and that's in talks of with, with, with Frank Warren, which I know they are about December, they're clearly looking over Liam Smith, and that's a good thing for him. Because Liam Smith's not an easy fight for anybody. WBO middle, uh, light middleweight champion of the world. Come on, unbeaten. This will be the longest period of time that you've had out as a pro, would not it? No. If you fight in September, what, nine months? You've had a longer period than nine months? Nine out. months. Before when I had injuries, I broke my hand. I was out, wasn't I, for about a year. A year? Yeah, really? I broke my hand, yeah. Didn't know it was um, as long as a year? Yeah, listen, nine months is a long time to be out. A very long time. All right, I got an injury on my hand. I take that into consideration. I had a hand injury. Um, what date was that? I was supposed to fight in April, was it? Yeah, that's when you pulled out from the Max Bozak So fight. that was like four months, yeah. So it would have been like four months out if I didn't have a hand injury, but I had it. I've got to move on from it. 
arms are okay, injury free. Just waiting to get in the ring with somebody. Obviously, the boxing scene, I think it's come a bit this way. Uh, a lot has been happening in that middleweight scene in the last sort of month or so. Quite notably, Kel Brook taking on Golovkin. Mm -hmm. What would you make of that, him jumping up to middleweight to find? Look, he's, um, I don't blame him because he's got nothing to lose. Because he's still world champion at his own weight. But, you know, our size is going to play a big, big factor in the fight. Um, I think it could be a good fight. I'm not I'm not taking nothing away from Cal uh, Cal Brook. Got to give him credit where credit's due. But he's definitely the underdog. Um, you know. But like he says, great fighters do great things. So you know, we know he's a good fighter. Is he a great fighter? We'll see. You were one of the few people that said that the Eubank Golovkin fight wouldn't happen. Um, so you weren't surprised with that I situation? Was, listen, I knew that fight was ever going to happen. Kugum, he wouldn't fight me. He wouldn't fight Danny Jacobs. He was offered a lot of money to fight me. <coughs> and he wouldn't fight Golovkin, which <coughs> people say, oh, I ducked this, I ducked... I'd never, never, ever ducked Golovkin. There was never a contract put in front of me. Never a contract, never terms and conditions. Only money. People need to realise that boxing, money is the easy part. Talking money is the easy part. We can all talk money. I can sit here and say I'm going to give this fella walking up here 10 million to fight, so and so. We can all say it, saying it and doing it is two different things. I was never offered that money that was said, nowhere near it. So how far did the talk so go far? I'll tell you further talks went with me and Golovkin. The talks went with me and Golovkin. My son was chucked at me and we'd sort out if it would be England or America. And if it was any more than that, I'd say. And the money they chucked off me at first, I said no straight to. I said no. I was willing to get in the ring with him without even having a warm-up fight. But the money they were talking was stupid. Uh, on Sky, you know, with the Eubank, I think Eubank would have walked away with a million quid, I suppose. It was never going to be three million what he was saying or whatnot else. He would have walked away with a million quid. But he, in his head, he can't afford to get beat again. And he can't because... There's no getting back where he was. It was very lucky to get back where he was after I beat him. But what people need to realise is that he's getting off of that kind of money to fight him, him and him. He's burnt his bridges now because I won't fight him because he's a messer. Now I doubt Golovkin has set back and have talks with him. Um, so who else, what other big fights is there for him? None. Because, you know, he only, he's not even European champion and getting off of that money to fight people. And, and getting out more opportunities because of who his dad is. You know, there you go. But apart from that, next question. Do you know when you heard certain things Eddie Hearn come out with about why that fight didn't happen, about certain things within the negotiations, was there any similarities between that and reasons why your rematch didn't happen? No. Listen, I didn't ask to run security or no shit like that. I didn't ask for that. I didn't ask for no none of that shit. That's all I asked for. Pay me fairly. I've been in this game since I've been five. Right, I've got young children to feed. Pay me fairly because it's a business. Pay me fairly and I'll fight. And I won't go in there thinking I was beat. Yeah, but were any of the reasons why he didn't... No. I'm on about from his side, Eubank's side. Oh, you, oh Eubank's side? Yeah. Oh, listen, yeah, all that. Yeah. Listen, that you, but I don't even want to, to be honest with you, he's not worth the spunk that's running down his mum's leg. Honestly, I don't really want to talk about him. He genuinely is not worth that. That was the best part of him, what run down the leg. I don't even want to talk about him, he's full of shit. I don't even know why he didn't take that fight. But there you go, end of story, next question. Okay. Um. I'm in one of them moves today, because we're not having a good day. Why? I'm just not having a good day. I'm not having a good day at all. Well, I think it's all right. I'm just waiting for your date. I'm waiting for it, yeah. I'm training and all that. I'm, I'm right into things, but I'm just having a good day today. I'm having a shit day. <laughs> what do you feel about Eubank and Tommy Langford? Kogan, I don't want to talk about him anymore. Seriously, I did not even bother to talk about Why? him because he just... Uh, it's pointless talking about him. 
Honestly, if you're laughing, yeah, but you're doing trying to get reaction. I just don't want to talk about him because he's irrelevant to my boxing career. I genuinely don't need to fight. I'm earning, I can earn millions of pounds fighting other people. Like I say, the best part of him run down his mum's leg. Fucking, it was a mistake. I just don't talk about him. I think Tommy Langford beats him. Next question. Have you been watching the Olympics? Yeah, and I've been having bets as well. So, do you know what? I just all I've been doing is training really hard, going back. Me and Tom Stalker picking out fights, betting on them. You'd be shocked and surprised the fights he picks out. That has been a bit disappointing from GB so far, hasn't it? Well, you say that. The good. results, I mean. Listen, it's the best fights, the best there. If you're not good enough, you're not good enough. I boxed there on the day I wasn't good enough. Got beat fair and square. Olympics is a funny thing because, listen, when I got beat in the Olympics, that was probably the best thing what could happen to me. Because if I would have won the Olympics, got silver or something like that, and then a bit, a bit bigger when I first started turning over like in myself, I don't think I would have been my champion today. Oh my. But, like, it was a very, very, it was one of them feelings like I couldn't sleep for two years. I got beat because I know that who I beat, who beat me, I beat him eight weeks beforehand. And uh, I sparred the Kazakh who won gold, who beat him in the final, and I busted him up. So it was frustrating, but for me, I was 18 year old running around Olympic Village, going wild, sneaking out at night on the Olympic fucking bars. And oh, mate, if I listen, if I told well, you. In what Beijing, I was, really? That's what in you're Beijing, doing. yeah. A little story. I was getting thrown out of the Olympic Games before it even started. Me and Frankie Gavin. Because. We were stealing jet skis, like, we got blamed for stealing <laughs> jet skis. No, no, yeah. Seriously? Yeah, not all the Sun newspaper, all the Sun newspaper was like, um, they said they had pictures in the, the Sun newspaper, had a picture of us pulling our ass out, yeah? Because we stole the jet skis. And uh, I had a, a meeting, and uh, the head of the Olympic Committee, I forget, I'll tell you his name now, his name is, um, you always see him, he's got like that bald head. Uh, he's, he's the head of the team, head of the Olympic uh, Committee, um, the rugby fella, what's his name? Oh, I well, know. Steve, uh, no, is it? Wo uh, Clive. Clive. Woodward. Woodward. He, he can't, he, him and Terry Edwards called me in the room and they, they were sending us home, sending me home. I was literally, on, I was going home from Macau training camp, I wasn't going into Olympics. Like, and they was all coming around me and Frankie Gavin in the end, he got made the way. So they, uh, they blamed him, they already blamed himself, he took the blame for me. But I was going home, 100% I was off home, so like... So, so, the way it turned out for you in 2008 has been a, a blessing in disguise to where you are now, is that what you say? That's what I'm saying, Coogan, yeah. Listen, I'll tell you what you get. You get some people win that medal and they're this, they're that, they're up and down, they think they've made it. Yeah, you, 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 you've hit the... You've hit the top of the amateur game. You can't get any higher. It's the pinnacle of every amateur boxer's career when the Olympic Games. You can't get any higher than that. Defend it ten times, you still can't get any higher than Olympics. And, um, you know, I, I think if I'd have won gold or, or that, I think it could have been the ruination of it. The, it could have. The ruination? The ruination. Is that a word? Yeah. And you've not heard of that? Well, I hear it anyway, so I'll say it. Yeah. Means like fuck me up. Yeah. Go fuck me yourself up. That's what I think anyway. Just picking this back up. So what else have you been up there? Cooking, that's all I've been doing is getting my head out of here, training really hard. I set them down to Gibraltar the other day with somebody. Yeah? And we got stopped at the borders because they look suspicious, Coogan. No, you, you got you stopped at the border because you have to stop at the border to give your passport. Why yeah. was you with? Yeah. Your missus and the daughter. Oh, good day. Don't know how she puts up with you, Coke, to be honest. No. Don't know how she puts up with you. Have you, been, have you enjoyed your week over it? Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. What other questions? You, you drive like a prick. Are you entitled to your opinion? No, you do. You drive. I know you drive like a prick because you nearly killed us in a cab a couple you, of years ago. You're entitled, like I say, you're entitled to your opinion. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to argue with you about it. Do you know when we went through the border? Yeah. Do you remember what the sign said? 
Oh, yeah, the sign said uh, something, all customers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, all customers. Coke, I can't read or write, mate. I can bear it, well, I can read, but I can't spell or write. I can, I just get, I've got lazy, yeah? It says customs, yeah? So I looked in it customer, and I was automatically called customers for some reason. So you said, basically, there's three lanes, and you said, well, we're customers, even though it didn't say customers, no, it's, it's a customs. We can go this one because we're customers. That's what you said, yeah. wasn't it? We're bringing money into Gibraltar, aren't we? It weren't very pretty going into Gibraltar, but where we ended up was alright, wasn't it? It was alright. Oh, did you see that interview on Twitter? I haven't watched it yet. It's on Twitter. I ain't watched it, but I know it's on there. You were giving a little interview, so who wants to watch Coogan's interview going Chris With Curry? Chris, yeah, Chris Curry. Go on his Twitter and uh, you'll see an interview with Coogan now. I didn't really say a lot. Neither did you, actually. I feel like I was in the zone, when I? I was just sitting down, just... I was just uh, admiring the views. Do you know what? You've lost a lot of weight. Because I saw you about two, three weeks ago. Yeah. You was quite big. Oh, I'm that big now. I can't make weight for my fights. I might move up to, like, heavy or cruiser. I, I, I probably would beat you like heavies or cruisers out there. Seriously, I'm gonna, I'm, what I'm going to do is defend me title a couple of times against the right people, then move up. I'm not going to go to super middle, I might go light heavy then super middle, then back to cruiser. Just change up a little bit. Do you know, I spoke to you um, in your barn, we were talking about McGregor and Mayweather, you know all that talk? Yeah, yeah. And then a couple of weeks ago, I think Emir Khan came out and said that he'd fight McGregor. Um, do you think that it's realistic that we'd ever get someone like that fight someone like that? Why do you want to, Why though? Why? Why would you want to do that? Tell you what, let Amir Khan go in a fight and live in a cage. I think that's what he was talking about, wasn't it? Well, he gets annihilated. Then. Bad. I'm pretty sure that's what he was talking but about. In the ring, Khan wins. In the cage, McGregor would fuck him up bad. Bad. I'd fuck McGregor up in the cage. Would you? See, I think you'd be a good street fighter. I would. Because you, you're quite... I've seen you have a street fight before. You're not supposed to say that, are you? No, no, that was years ago, though, before you was into boxing. It was years ago. But, listen, do so you want to get in the chokehold? Sorry, I had to cut something out of Billy Joe's interview, then. You said it, not me. Um, anyway, um, so you're not a fan of... All this talk, because at the minute it's all talk of do you know what? a Until pro boxer fighting an MMA fighter of that sort of profile. Why do Floyd Mayweather? All right, the money side. Conor McGregor brings a lot of money for Ireland, and, and, and you know he, he, they know that he, he brings super money in. So money-wise, you can't really blame. But who wants to listen to that shit on the boxing scene? No. If you want to fight him, go and fight him in a cage. Get in fight, because I'll tell you one thing, people will pay a lot more money to see you fight them in the cage than what they would in the ring. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they would. Yeah. They'd pay a hell of a lot more money. You'd get super, super bucks. I'll fight them in the cage. No problem whatsoever. Yeah, but you, you've said this before, but would you, you, you've got a successful pro oh, career. Listen, Why I, would I, you... I have. It, it wouldn't bother me if I, it would not bother me the slightest if I never stepped foot in a... M and and what can I say the word M M A K is it? Yeah. MMA. W W F. It won't bother me. What listen? What is nice about two men rubbing their balls up against one another? And and, and, and what what is nice about that? I don't think. It's, I don't know. Listen, each their own. I just, it's not a bit of me. It's just not a bit of me. Right. We've had this conversation before. Women's boxing. I don't disagree with it. I don't say it's wrong or should never happen, but it's just not a bit of me. If I had a daughter, would I let her fight? Never in a million years. Never. Would you? Probably not. But, so, you wouldn't encourage it, but so you, you would just wouldn't point blank let it happen. If you had a daughter and she wanted to do boxing. No, I wouldn't let her do it. Never. I learned a little bit at home. Any boys come round, they'd let a few shots go. But they wouldn't need it because I'd be there. 
I'll let a few shots go as well. And it wouldn't be in my hands. <laughs> if I had a daughter, I'd be absolute. Listen, if I had a daughter, oh my god. If I had a daughter, it'd be terrible. Because. You see one of them dads about 20 year old years and I'll be sitting at the back of the pictures watching like people <laughs> sitting here I'll move them along like one of them ones. Oh. You know I roll Cook. I know you roll. Uh, shout out to Sicily.co.uk. A big shout out to that matter of fact. We're doing a separate one about that as well. Are we? Two out, yeah, we've got two out. Alright. So um, be good. What are your main sponsor there? The main man. MGM Marbella, yeah. Hooks everybody up, come out here. Coogan comes out here, he's looked after, same as everybody else, still looked after. Spot on. Gym, you don't get no better. Weather, you definitely can't get no better. Beaches, tracks, whatever you need or want is in MGM Marbella. Mm -hmm. I would like to bring MGM Marbella to London. All the beach, all the sun. What's our weather like back home, Coogan? You should do NGM Marbella Gypsy Edition. You should do that. Only gypsies allowed in them. I'm not like that, though, Cole. What? I'm not like that. I'm not. Uh, to be fair, I don't really go around with gypsies. I don't mix with a lot of gypsies, do I? You do some. That's where I'm from. You've got to, some, but I'm, I don't. I, I don't know. I mix with your car nice. Pardon? I mix with your car nice. Gorgia what, people from Essex? Yeah, oh, gorgeous people. people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what do, you, what, do you, what do you thought I meant? I don't know what you meant. I mix with Sri Lankans. I genuinely do mix with Sri Lankans. I've got more than one Sri Lankan friend. What? I've got more Ooh. than... Do you know what I see the other day? Did you see the thing on the internet the other day um, about the two quid when she had all sex with the man? No. You ever seen it? No. I don't think I want him, to be honest. That's your Uncle Ajay. He is Gogan. Did you not see it? No. It's gone viral, mate. It's so funny. It's a joke. No, I haven't. you got to watch it. I believe you've got to watch that. Uncle who? Sean Kaijo. You know who's... I haven't seen it. It's not something I really want to see, to be honest. <sighs> right, have you got anything else you want to say? No, Coogan. I'm all out of words today. You've come and caught me at the wrong day today. I'm all out of words. I think you've said enough. Alright, can I ask you something else about Chris Eubank? No. Don't want to know any more about him. He's... I'll just have one more question. Go and ask Glofkin that. Uh, Alright, uh, Billy Joe Saunders, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Hope, <laughs> hope your opponent gets sorted out soon. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Thank you, Coogie Boy. I just want to say a big thank you to Joe Ricotto, who's launching his new business, sicily.co.uk. Everybody go to the website and check it out. Thank you very much for the sponsorship, mate. God bless.